Hello and good evening, and welcome to episode two of Recycling with a Vengeance. This is Leland Erickson, your host and resident mad scientist. And tonight we're going to pick up where we left off from episode one. Here is our reworked dead mouse. Now with a black coat of primer, just black spray paint, flat black. Now it kind of gives our creation a little more of an identity, I think. But it's going to be hard to see. So we need to do something more with it. So we're going to start by painting and we're going to start with something real quick tonight, the most basic of basics, dry brushing. Now here's some paint. I've even opened it up. It's a little bit of gray. And I've got a lighter gray, also a water-based acrylic. And this is a Reaper paint. And the first one is Formula P3 from Privateer Press. But uh, it's all good. And we got a big old ratty brush here, nice and soft cover a lot of ground. Dry brushing is hard on brushes. Why is it called dry brushing? Well, paper towel and a brush. And I'm going to get some of that darker gray on my brush and I'm going to wipe away a, a bunch of it. And so the brush is nearly dry. And I go back and forth real quick. Chop, chop like that. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going to keep doing that. And you see how the paint's sticking mostly to the raised areas? And I get some more paint. Wipe a little more off. And again. And I'm just going to keep repeating this until I get enough of coverage in the area that I want to cover with this gray. Because you see I'm up to something here. Oh, there we go. Make sure it's in the camera so everyone can see. Now I'm going to show you something here. You see this separation here? all the way around where the two halves came together. Well, I'm going to paint them different colors. I am inspired by military history, particularly the Second World War, probably because my dad was a veteran. He was caught up in that conflict, as were a couple of my uncles, one in particular who served over in Europe with, in Patton's Third Army. But the oldest of my dad's brothers, my Uncle Eddie was a pilot. And so from a young age, I was fascinated with airplanes. And one thing led to another. And I put a lot of time in studying military aviation, particularly World War II and World War I, a bit less. But I got a lot of ideas from looking at the airplanes and such from World War II. And so I got a lot of my ideas for painting science fiction machines from looking at things from World War II. Tanks, soldiers' uniforms, and so on. And that's what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to cover. This is just the first pass. And we're going to have to stop after we do this because it'll need to dry. But while it's doing that, well, we'll talk just a little bit more about where I get my ideas. And there we go. The gray is where I want it. Make sure I get in there. I got that. Get more on that. Okay. So when that dries, I'm going to come back to it. And I'm going to give it the same treatment over that gray with a lighter gray. Misty gray. And then you'll see the real magic that comes out with dry brushing. But now, let's go back a bit and take a moment and look at a finished piece. Remember this colorful thing? Well, two things about it. One, dry brushing is how I got it where it is. It's also how I did weathering. See the dust build up? Because even a hovering craft will get dirty. The camouflage is taken, it's inspired by World War I camouflage particularly the French style on their tanks and artillery pieces. Kind of reverse cubism. The French invented camouflage painting, by the way, in World War I. An art, uh, university instructor in art, a guy named Discavola, he hit on the idea. So 
This has been dry brushed. You can see a bit of it on the underside here. And I used two shades of gray. And you can just see some of the black in there. I wasn't going to be fancy because the base was going to go under it and disguise a lot. So that's what dry brushing can look like when we're done. So when we're done, when our little friend here decides he's all dry, we'll give him his second color. We'll give him that lighter gray over the darker gray. Oh, there we go. Brush fiber can happen. Beat up old brushes are best for dry brushing. And then we'll do the upper side. So that's episode two. We're kind of short, I admit it. But this is the stuff that inspires me. Oh, one more thing. I can show you a book. You see, this is one of the resources I use. Books like this. This is from Squadron Signal Publications. It's about an airplane called an F 2A Buffalo. But look at the way it's colored, the way it was painted. That's what's inspiring how I'm going to finish our little speeder. And speaking of books, I wrote one. And you can find this on Amazon. That's right. I went and done a bad thing. I actually wrote a book called Recycling with a Vengeance. Project One. Sorry for the wavering, guys. I'm learning as I go. It's using my phone. There we are. Recycling with a Vengeance, project booklet number one, the anti-gravity tank destroyer, made from a dead computer mouse. Yay! I did this. It's on Amazon, and so if you really want to have a book that shows you what I do, by all means, go get it. But until next time, and it'll be soon, this is Leland Erickson. This is episode two of Recycling with a Vengeance. And we'll see you next time for episode three. Ta!